What's up everybody, it's Yvonne with Trout's Fly Fishing, back with the forecast for April 9th. Uh, <clears throat> it's hard to believe that it's already mid-April, uh, but it is one of my favorite times to be out on the water. Uh, obviously, uh, we will have variable temperatures. Um, you know, as a general rule, April is not gonna be as wet of a month, specifically for us here in the Front Range. Uh, that obviously can change, uh, we've seen that. <clears throat> but, we're gonna hopefully still see some storms move through, continue to bolster that snowpack, but the fishing should be uh, very productive. Um, so you have, general, as a general rule, especially in the tailwaters, midges in the morning and then blue wings in the afternoon. Caddis nymphs are gonna be productive. Uh, I looked at the weather. Uh, we're not gonna see some of the overwhelming heat that we saw this week. Uh, so over the next 10 days, it looks a little bit more um, traditionally spring weather. So you see you know, temperatures in the 50s and the 40s. Uh, you see some clouds moving through, some showers moving through. All good news for good uh, blooming olive fishing, which for me is music to my ears. The other thing that means is good streamer fishing. Obviously we'll see some bumps and flows, some rises and falls. Um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to add some snowpack as I mentioned, um, but you know, we'll see some bumps and, bumps and flows. And with those bumps, you'll see some colder water sort of inserted into the systems. Um, and so you have to change your tactics up a little bit there. But with those bumps and flows and bumps in water, uh, decreases in water clarity, uh, streamers can be very productive <laughs> this time of year. Excuse me. Um, so we'll get to that here shortly. We'll talk bugs, flow, and weather. Let's start with bugs. We're gonna start with flies or bugs. And the first one, one near and dear to my heart, the wedgehead streamer. This is in black, has some copper flash, some purple legs. It's a go big or go home, swinging for the fences kind of fly. Uh, with a lot of the variable flows we'll see, some variable water cl cl uh, clarity. A big black streamer <clears throat> is visible. If you have a little flash, it's extra visible. It pushes water, it's got a huge head. This time of year, we obviously see some weirder flows uh, and fish are generally on the, the prowl, especially bigger fish are on the prowl for an easy meal uh, pre-runoff, post-winter. I think the wedgehead streamer is a great option. So that's number one. Number two, good fly for a lead fly or a middle fly if you're really trying to get down the jig Frenchie, <coughs> Frenchie's like a little bit of a pheasant tail variant, has some extra, uh, no, I shouldn't say extra, it's sort of a sparse to down version of a pheasant tail. Uh, but the, the Frenchie flat out produces fish, the jig version gets down in the pocket, gets your other bugs down in the pocket. A good option for this, these, uh, the springtime. So jigged Frenchie. And then the next flies, I think you could run this as a single rig potentially. You could also sort of mix it up, obviously, but if you were running a three fly rig, I might uh, start with an electric caddis, a good larva pattern, nice chartreuse olive color, uh, super productive this time of year as those caddis become more active. You could drop off of that a shot glass betas. This is in purple, uh, betas in the afternoon, but you're also seeing them uh, when it's cloudy. Uh, you're just, they're gonna be more present in the, in the water column. So if you're running a three fly rig uh, subsurface, a shot glass bait is a great option for the second fly. And fly, the last fly on that rig, you can fish this uh, super deep, but then you can also fish this during the, the peak of the hatch, sub, like mid water column subsurface. Uh, the Rojo Midge has the red bead, has a little bit of a tuft, great uh, midge pupa pattern. Um, you can get super nerdy, Greg Garcia, the uh, gentleman who uh, originated this pattern, um, did some research on uh, Midge's life cycle and this like supercharged hemoglobin, uh, basically in, a, in that late stage of before they emerge, they get uh, this really, they almost start to glow a little bit. Um, and so that red is a great trigger point for fish, um, trying to pick off those uh, emerging or almost emerging uh, midges. So those are the five flies. Uh, let's get to flows and then we'll talk weather. Yeah, I remember this time, flows.
Uh, flows receive some uh, variability, some increases, some rises. Uh, I would expect those to sort of settle out a little bit over the next couple weeks, uh, especially if the weather holds as it's supposed to. Um, so you're still pretty consistent on the tailwaters. Uh, I think Decker's has bumped to around 84. Uh, I would assume that's because of some snow melt um, because coming out of the dam, it's like 41 uh, out of Cheeseman. Same thing for 11 miles, same thing for the Dream Stream. Yeah, like 11 miles, 56. Uh, the Dream Stream is 56 as well. Uh, so we're seeing some pretty uh, consistent lower flows on those free stones. Obviously that makes for clearer water. That makes for a little bit more technical fishing. Uh, so make sure you have your five and six X out uh, and you know, a little bit more stealthy. Uh, fish are gonna be a little bit, uh, a little bit more touch and go. They're not gonna be as settled in as if we saw flows around 200 or something like that. Uh, so keep that in mind. Lighter weight, lighter tippet, smaller flies, unless you're fishing the big spring midges. Also the blue wings is a general rule in the beginning of the hatch and we're sort of in the beginning of that ha the hatch period of time right now, uh, the, the blue wings are going to be a little bit bigger, so 18s, and as that uh, hatch progresses, 20s, 22s. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, so that's the, the tailwaters, the freestones. We've seen a rise over the last week. Obviously, we've had some warmer weather, um, and so a lot of the sort of low elevation snow is uh, melting. No surprise there. Uh, that can add some color into the water. Um, so in that case, you know, using a bigger, darker fly or using some smaller flashy flies, using something that will break up that uh, cloudy water that will catch a fish's attention. Uh, they will have less time to pick the food out. So you can go super gaudy or you can go super big, uh, but they do need to see it. So, you know, picking a fly that's gonna get down into the pocket, but then also fish, picking a fly that's gonna catch their attention. So, you know, we have some flies here that would be great for, for that. Uh, I would also throw in like big patch rubber legs, big wired stones, um, and then rainbow warriors, lightning bugs, things like that. So uh, keep that in mind uh, for those variable flows. I would expect them to settle out a little bit. Uh, you, you know, sometimes we get the question around this time of year, is this the start of runoff? It's not the start of runoff, it's just the period of time when you get a little bit more variability. So uh, while it can be a little bit touch and go with the flows, uh, the fishing can be uh, pretty outstanding this time of year. So keep that in mind, that's the flows. Let's talk about weather. So talking weather, uh, I'm filming this a little bit earlier than I normally would, so I don't have a full forecast into the next two weeks, but uh, just a quick glimpse uh, looking at the weather over, let's say the seven days after this releases, in Sedalia, so Sedalia slash Deckers, uh, the highs will be between the, 50, the mid 50s and the uh, mid 30s. So this is very sort of transitional spring weather. Uh, we have some partly cloudy days mixed in, some rain days mixed in, obviously very good for uh, blueing olives. Uh, and the same can be said for up in Vale. So sort of those uh, temperatures in the mid to or sort of upper 40s to lower 50s uh, and some clouds mixed in as well. So I would expect the flows to sort of stabilize with that um, and I would expect fish to be enjoying blueing olives quite a bit. So uh, that's the weather. Uh, I actually like seeing this as, you know, obviously I, I like warm weather. I like wearing shorts as much as the next guy, uh, but we want to preserve that. We want the snowpack to be preserved. We don't want an early runoff. Um, obviously we have no control over that, but in our brains is what we want. I also want to see good spring fishing. And so this weather upcoming, upcoming weather patterns um, sort of lead or lean into that. They, I don't, I'm not very good at English. The weather coming up makes for good spring fishing, preserves the snowpack, there we go. English hard, Eva I'm not good at English. Too many finger guns, all right, that's it. So. Weather, flows, bugs, that's a quick rundown. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, as always, you can find us here in Trout's Denver, up in Trout's Frisco, online, troutsflyfishing.com. Cheerio, bye.